Hey, I'm James from Soak It Dad Barbecue, and today I am testing my new and improved mop sauce recipe on some beef ribs. Now, I recently was watching American Barbecue Showdown, and one of the contestants on there, Thyron Matthews, shared his granddaddy's mop sauce, and I was reminded again just how great a mop sauce can be on so many things. And when world famous pitmaster and judge Melissa Cookston was sampling his food, she commented on how you could taste that mop sauce from the bark all the way down to the bone. And this reminded me, earlier this winter, I was on a pursuit to try and recreate another famous Pitmaster's mop sauce, which is Rodney Scott, uh, who turns out an amazing whole hog. And he talks about mop sauce all the time without revealing the details. And so I've been experimenting on trying to get a little bit closer to that sampling experience I had from uh, Rodney Scott with my own mop sauce recipe. So today is not a pure Rodney Scott recipe. You'll notice it right away just looking at the consistency of it. But I am in a bit of a hybrid of what Rodney does, as well as some of my my favorite things uh, in a mop sauce and I found some amazing beef ribs on sale at Costco so that's what we've got in the smoker today. Let me tell you about the game plan on how we're going to prep the beef ribs. So like all good barbecue this cook actually started 24 hours ago with an overnight salt dry brine. I didn't add any other ingredients at this point just the salt is good enough so that catches you up to this morning. Let me take you back a little bit earlier show you everything I did from my rub uh, which I've been really happy with some of the tweaks. Again I did a three-way Texas Pitmaster rub comparing Franklin's to to blacks to goldies uh, and the family and blind taste test picked a favorite so i've been making some adjustments to my rub to get a little bit closer to the overall group consensus and what their favorite blind taste test rub was so i've got a couple of those uh, updates in the rub as well today so let me take you back a little bit earlier and then mid cook i'll show you how to make uh, this mop sauce and as you can tell right now we are getting close to the finish line so we're, when you rejoin me current time it'll be time to dive in for our taste test and see how the new and improved rub as well as mop sauce 2.0 has come together on these amazing looking beef ribs. Okay, so our beef ribs have just come out of a 24 hour dry brine. I am super impressed with these Costco beef ribs. This came in a two pack. I'm only gonna do one today, save the other one for another cook, but this is about 50 Canadian, 30 bucks US. We've got a nice age on these already. Uh, great marbling, super excited, 30 bucks. This is amazing. So I'm gonna start by adding just a little bit of a binder. Uh, you can use anything for a binder, but I love something like Truff uh, because it gives us a little bit of that umami uh, that you get with the mushroom flavor and a little bit of hot sauce that doesn't come through in the finished product, but definitely adds a little bit of depth. I've had similar results with any truffle oil, so it doesn't have to be just this, it is rather expensive so if you're able to find something for less money by all means knock yourself out but i'm just going to get a little bit of a binder on here to help our rub adhere after the dry brine everything is really dry to the touch so if we were just to hit it right now with our rub it would fall off so unlike when we open it from the packaging you don't really need uh, a binder at this stage we definitely do that looks good. So I'm going to start with the bottom. We'll finish on our presentation side. So we've already got salt on here. So I'm going to go for uh, a little bit of onion powder. I've got garlic, some chili flakes, some paprika, cayenne. I dropped some my Lowry's flying, but I've got some Lowry's as well. We're not going to go too aggressively as this is very concentrated salt, but I like just a little bit of salt finishing on the tongue and then some fresh cracked black pepper. So the reason I like to go for these sort of flavor profiles is salt, pepper, garlic in general is a great combination on beef, but onion adds a little bit of, you know, sweetness. Garlic is going to add a little bit of savory the chili flakes as well as the cayenne is going to add some heat. These are the types of things, the umami adding sort of the that depth, that smokiness. These are the types of things that stand up to smoke really, really well. Anything that's milder like, um, you know, thyme or rosemary, aromatics don't tend to hold up to an all day smoke session. Whereas these flavor profiles really do continue to shine even at the end of a long smoke session. So that's why I've gone with our rub ingredients today. Take a fast forward while I get the rest of these flakes on as well as our paprika and pepper. And then we'll finish the presentation side last. And then we'll finish with our fresh cracked black pepper. 
I do recommend that you don't need to use what I'm doing here at Pepper Cannon. I like it because I can control the mesh really specifically and grind up a bunch of other things. But cracking your pepper fresh will really help highlight the spice profile of pepper. Uh, mentioning that's one of the things that stands through. This makes a big difference versus buying something that might be going a little bit stale and starting to already lose its flavor. These look good. Let's go get them on. All right, let's get started on our mop sauce. So I'm gonna go with some crushed tomatoes. You could use some ketchup, but I find you get a better result going with a crushed tomato and then adding some sugar. But instead of adding water and sugar, we're gonna rely on something like apple juice. Gives us a little bit better result. So we'll get this out and into our induction top. About a cup of white vinegar, about a cup of apple juice. I like to put a couple raw ingredients into my sauce. So we're going to start with a little bit of citrus. So I've got uh, a lemon here that we're just going to do into slices. Then we're going to kind of coarsely chop uh, a white onion and then break apart our garlic and add that all in there. So this won't fully incorporate into the sauce, but as they break down and release their oils, they will help add some of those flavors into our mop sauce. And then just use the heel of our knife and we'll just crush those. That's going to help the garlic release its oil and fragrance more quickly into our mop sauce as that comes up to a simmer and just make it a little bit easier to get these out of the skins. I'll take you fast forward while I remove the skins from the rest of them. And when I rejoin you, we'll add the next ingredients. Okay, we got our garlic and onions in. Give us a quick little stir. Now we can continue adding everything else. I'm going to go for about a half bottle here of hot sauce. We'll adjust and taste as we go but take it fast forward while we wait for this to pour out i swear every time the camera's off i can say it right but every time i try when i'm recording we'll get it wrong so let's try one more time add our Worcester sauce it's about a quarter cup that i've added a little bit of cayenne some salt this is a uh, malden smoked salt we'll keep this out as we'll adjust for a taste in a little bit and then some fresh cracked black pepper and a tablespoon of brown sugar again we'll keep this out and adjust and we'll give this a taste to see how it's coming together. Heat is good. Needs a little bit more vinegar as well as sugar. Spice though, whoo, fogging up. That's okay, that's what we want in a mop sauce. It'll add nice depth. So I'm gonna give it another about a tablespoon here of brown sugar and a little bit more apple juice. And just so you can watch me struggle trying to say it, a little bit more Worcester sauce. Might as well finish this bottle off. That is on the money. I'll take it over to our flat top and let this simmer for a couple hours. And by then our lemons and onions will be even more incorporated into our mop sauce. See you there. Ooh, it's good. Check our flat top temperature here. About 276, that's gonna be perfect for simmering. Let's grab our sauce. And a couple more wood splits for our next fire. All right, let's get a temp, see where we're at. Those are looking good, but I think we are ready to start mopping. Now that we are getting our bark starting to form and getting up to about that 160, 170 range, I think that is the perfect spot to start mopping. And this is a, a hybrid mop. So you see that we get that fall off of the mop when you pick it up. This is a little bit closer to Rodney Scott's where you see that runoff versus some of the other ones that will really you know, stick to the mop. So we've got a little bit of a hybrid mop. Get this on. Start building some of those layers of flavor. Do want to take care not to put any pressure down on this. If I'm doing that, it's just to squeeze out what I've got in the mop. So I get all of that onto the meat. If we were to put a lot of pressure at this early stage, even though the bark is coming along, I could still end up damaging the bark or taking it right off. So that looks good for our first mop application. We'll continue to do this about every 30 minutes or so. So as you can tell, it is go time. Our beef ribs have been off and resting for the past hour. And just in the nick of time, we are nearly out of light. I've got some supplemental light. So hopefully you can see what my eyes are seeing because this looks absolutely amazing. Let's get nice and close. We'll slice into our beef ribs, dive in for our taste test. So you know somehow 
somehow these don't taste as amazing as they look. The aromas coming off. Oh, I accidentally hit that and just got nice little jiggle. <laughs> this is going to be so good. All right, let's cut these out, get our bones. I mean, look at that. Just juices galore running down there. I don't want to squeeze that out. Beautiful smoke ring, great looking bark. Let's get a few more off the bones here and I could cut a smaller piece for our taste test. I mean, look at that fat render all the way through. Perfect, I don't wanna lose these juices, but this is incredible. And if I were to give this the slightest tug, you can just see here, I can pull this bone. Actually, why don't I just do that? We are off to the races. Little membrane stick, but a completely clean bone. Beautiful looking marbling and fat render. I'm gonna cut a few smaller pieces off this so we can get what I hope to be perfect barbecue bite. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Wow. That is <laughs> remarkable. Okay, let me try and make sense of what's going on. So first, the bark, the crunch, the texture, it's awesome. As you can see from our smoke ring, the smoke quality is amazing. This is what you get an offset for to help challenge again. That's why I picked one up is to challenge my other smokers to see if I can turn out a result more similar to what I get an offset. And every time I do a cook on the offset, I'm just reminded this is why it is the gold standard and the benchmark because these are awesome. Getting into our mop sauce, exactly what Melissa Cookson was talking about, where you get that flavor, depth of flavor all the way through. There's not a bland piece of beef in here. It's just full of flavor all the way through. And so kind of unpacking what we're getting, we're getting a little bit of that citrus. Then you start to feel a little bit of the heat on the back of your tongue, but it dissipates pretty quickly and it starts to mellow out with some of those other savory compounds, whether it be the tomato itself as some of that citrus, the garlic, uh, salt and pepper are all coming in there. This is just a symphony of flavors in the mouth. And I hope you absolutely uh, roll up the sleeves and give this a try because it turns out an amazing cook on everything I've tried it. And this is beef. It's even more special on something like a full pork shoulder or anything like that. So that's it for today though. I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue signing off. Remember, don't be afraid to fire it up. I'm going again.